Stick your nose in it. Don't be yeah. shy. Really get your nose right in there, really. It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Jane Pauley. He was the toast of Hollywood after a tour de force performance in the movie Sideways. This time around, Paul Giamatti plays a private school instructor teaching a valuable life lesson, learning some things about himself along the way. Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes has a Sunday profile of actor Paul Giamatti. What is it about acting that you love or like? I don't know. Do you love it? I do love it. Okay. Yeah, no, I do love it. And like anything you love, that can get difficult. Difficult characters are a Paul Giamatti specialty. I can tell by your faces that many of you are shocked at the outcome. He portrayed a cantankerous John Adams. Now either you are stuck raving mad, or I am. Good day, sir. And a brutal U.S. attorney in billions. Drop your credentials at the guard's desk and get the out of here! And in his latest movie, The Holdovers, Giamatti plays Paul Hunnam. You were born lucky. A bitter teacher at a New England boarding school. Sir, I don't understand. That's glaringly apparent. I can't fail this class. Oh, don't sell yourself short, Mr. Coates. I truly believe that you can. Hunnam is in charge of the students with nowhere to go at Christmas. And he forms a bond with a rebellious kid and the school's grieving cook. You know he flourished here. Yes. No, he was a great kid. Played by Davine Joy Randolph, whose deceased son attended the school. He said you were a real Well, uh, like I said, <laughs> sharp kid, insightful. Someone described the movie as a Scrooge-like Christmas story, mm -hmm. with you being Scrooge. Yeah, it's a little bit of that. It has a Christmas Carol thing. I think all three of the characters are Scrooge a little bit. They all need to kind of move out of a place that they're stuck in. The 56-year-old's performance earned him an Oscar nomination for Best Actor and Critics' Choice and Golden Globe Awards. So you win the Golden Globes. Yes. And you take your award and you go to a burger joint? Sure. Are you serious? Absolutely. But then we went to parties, we went to fancy things, but we got the cheeseburger, you know? I loved it. It's, it's good. Action. His role in The Holdovers hey. was written for him. There's times when I think, why was this written specifically for me, a man who smells like fish that nobody likes? And then I look at it and I go, I think I know. One reason, Giamatti, raised in Connecticut, attended a prep school himself. What in this part was familiar? Most of it was pretty familiar to me. I had teachers that were this sort of strict disciplinarians like this. You stay out of my way, and I'll stay out of yours. That's a detention. Done. You just earned yourself a detention, sir. Now get back here. Being here with you is already one big detention. Son of a That's another detention. Did you get in trouble? I only got in, yeah, I was not a big troublemaker. I, <laughs> the way I got in trouble, I'm not kidding, was I would cut classes to go read, like, you know, science fiction books in the library on my own. Really nerdy trouble. Yeah, is what totally I nerdy. Yeah, well. super nerdy <laughs> trouble, yeah. That bookishness ran in the family. Paul's mother, Tony, was a teacher, and his dad, Bart Giamatti, was once president of Yale, and later, Major League Baseball commissioner. Your dad died when he was quite young. 51. 51. Yeah. Were you an actor yet? No. I had just graduated from college, and I was sort of, I loved acting. I did it as an extracurricular thing, but some part of me didn't think it was something I would do. Still, he began acting professionally in plays and later movies. And I started making a very small living at it. But I was deceived into thinking, oh, I can do this. This is not too bad. What was your first movie? <laughs> I think it was a kind of, not great, kind of slasher movie. Ah. Yeah, and I had one scene in it. I, I, I swore on the Bible. And, and, and you can go to hell if you swear on the Bible and it ain't the truth. I've never seen it. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I learned fast. This too shall pass. And he quickly landed small roles opposite some big names. We got stopped by some intense rifle action from the eastward. 
The Germans have been reinforcing two regiments all day. You have violated my wife. I did You not. soiled the sanctity of my home. Giamatti has a biopic to thank for his big break. It was about Howard Stern. You're not getting the phone from me, Kenny. No. Oh, God. Oh, my God, Rob. Kenny just hit himself in the face. He's bleeding. He played Kenny Pig Vomit Rushton, Stern's put-upon corporate handler. It was a fantastic role. It was a really, really fun part. Why was it fantastic? It was incredibly energetic and kind of crazy role with lots of latitude to do lots of crazy things. You're often described as the king of curmudgeons, mm -hmm. that you play a lot of those kinds of characters mm -hmm. in bad moods all the time, <laughs> kind of angry at the world. Uh -huh. Does this bother you that you're called curmudgeony? I don't mind it. I think it's a great. I think it's a great word. I, I often think that really I just play kind of complicated people, people with a complicated relationship to the world. Aye, aye, Captain, you got it. Like Miles Raymond. We're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any Merlot. The boozy failed writer and wine snob in the Oscar-winning movie Sideways. Oh, there's just like the faintest. Sousson of like uh, asparagus and there's a just a flutter of like a like a nutty Edom cheese. Do people come up and ask you for wine recommendations. Yes. They do? Oh yeah, and, and whenever I go to a restaurant, the sommelier gives me the wine list. And I know nothing about wine. Zero. What? I know nothing about come wine. Come on. No, nothing. I don't even know which one's what color. So the other day, Chianti, is it Chianti? I don't know what color that is. What is it, red or white? It's red. It's red, okay. I see, I thought it was white. Oh, it's flavors. They're just the most haunting and brilliant and thrilling and subtle. There are a couple of scenes where you're very hangdog. And we get to see that basically depressed guy. Mm -hmm. And then you smile. Well, okay. And you go from being a nerd, a nebbish, to being Paul Newman. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> With a great smile, handsome. I mean, it does happen in a flash. But it is that thing of like, it's all here, you know? It's, it's the wordless stuff is, is the most powerful stuff. Paul Newman, that's really nice that's if you good. say That's good. I was thinking it, though, <laughs> truly. Paul Newman had his race cars. Paul Giamatti has a theremin. I feel like every theremin player in the world is so insulted by what I do. He was here to record his podcast, Chinwag. Why do you do a podcast? It's a good question. I am interested in strange things, weird topics. But the weird topics can be anything from UFOs to Egyptian history. I have all different kinds of theories about Bigfoot because he's super fascinating. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> he recorded the podcast before an audience at the SF Sketch Fest. Great, thank you very much. I'm curious about your uh, technique. Like, <laughs> there isn't one, man. <laughs> the camera loves you. Okay. You're not Errol Flynn. I but, am not Errol Flynn. <laughs> but the camera loves you. You know what, you. dude? That's my memoir title right I there. <laughs> I am not Errol Flynn. In fact, in one of his favorite roles, he played no human at all. Uh, I must be out of my mind. Out of my mind. You played an orangutan. I did. Oh my God, look at you. I loved playing an orangutan. That was really fun. Get him out and get him clean! I was covered head to toe in amazing prosthetic makeup. And so I was completely transformed, which is, for an actor, is great. Like I just completely changed into a monkey. It's like you're hiding. Yes, completely. And, and I wasn't me anymore. I'd look in the mirror and I was gone. What's with the hiding thing? It's an excellent question. It's a very strange way of connecting with other people, I think. It's very weird. I don't know what the explanation is. If you I You walk knew, around saying, gee, Paul, you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> I do, actually, sometimes. <laughs> but I actually think it's a good thing. I enjoy being weird. It's OK being weird. Weird is all right. Yeah. Yeah.